Welcome to a new In The Mail, the series that will touch both your passion for electronics and your bank account at the same time. We're going to start with this big jar of flux paste. This is commonly referred to as yellow paste and the branding I believe is NT. But if you search for the keywords of yellow paste, you'll find it in various sizes. Banggood sells it in this 150 gram jar and it has a good price of $4 with free shipping. So just out of curiosity, let's bring in this uh, scale and check if this is really 150 grams. And towards our surprise, this is just 108 grams why do they mark this as 150 grams i don't know like i would have bought this even if it was uh, 100 grams but now it somehow feels sketchy and we can see a void in here inside the box so maybe this container can hold 150 grams but they just load them with uh, less that's not nice i'm not sure if uh, uh I'm not sure where this problem happens, if, if it's at the factory, if, if this is genuine or not, but now there are some questions. This video is sponsored by JLCPCB.com, a professional PCB supplier who can offer 24 hours turnaround time for prototype PCBs for just $2. You also have a selection of solder mask colors with no extra cost and affordable laser cut stencils, so it's definitely worth checking them out. The consistency is that of a butter or a paste, so it, it would be impossible to put this uh, inside a uh, syringe and dispense it that way. This works better if you uh, pick it up with a toothpick or some tweezers. This is not rosin based or so they advertised and it's supposed to be a neutral pH with low corrosion to your PCB and components. So you'll probably see me use this in a future video. Until then there will be a link in the description so you can order one for yourself. My next item is a boost converter module, but one that I could not find in my order list, so I'm not sure why I received this. It's based on the XL6019 converter chip. The input can be 5 to 40 volts DC and it can boost the output up to 40 volts. I'm not sure of the output current, but they specify a recommended input current of 3 amps, so the output has to be lower than that depending on the set voltage, which can be adjusted with this uh, uh, multi-turn potentiometer. This is not a synchronous topology because I can see a Schottky diode in here, so it's not going to be the most efficient boost converter. I'm wondering if I haven't somehow ordered this a few months ago when I was testing various boost converters about the time when I released Voltog 245 on testing that TI boost converter. In any case, there will be a link to this in the description below the video. Next up, I have some products sent in by a viewer. His name is Igor, he is from Slovakia and he runs an eBay shop with various electronic components in stock. He sent me some of this uh, heat shrink tubing, the type with uh, glue on the inside of the uh, tubing, which is good for insulating the wire or solder joint from moisture or dust. I highly recommend using this stuff if your wiring is going to be sitting in the outdoors or if you are doing automotive wiring repairs. Next, he sent in some SMD chips. These are uh, MC78M12 and uh, this is a positive linear voltage regulator in this case 12 volts and the MC79M12 which is a negative linear voltage regulator in this case minus 12 volts and these are rated for 500 milliamps. He also sent in a couple of uh, small heat sinks. These are for TO220 style transistor packages and might be good for I don't know roughly half a watt or a quarter watt. He also sent in a uh, PCB module. Judging by the uh, three USB connectors, two are Taipei, one is a micro USB. Uh, this might be for a uh, power bank or charger circuit. And uh, inside this bag, we also have some chips and some switches. These are 74HC4066 analog switches. And we also have two types of uh, tactile switches. 
He also included some of this uh, aluminium tape which is uh, cut in these small rectangles. That makes me think this was intended for some kind of production line to be used on a particular product where a piece of aluminium tape was needed to cover something. And uh, he also sent me this sheet of adhesive backed black uh, soft touch material. It's also cut into smaller uh, rectangles. Uh, it doesn't appear to be obviously conductive, so I'm not sure what this could be used for. Maybe you guys can let me know in the comments uh, below. It's slightly larger than the previous rectangles, so I don't know. Is it supposed to go over the aluminium tape? I really don't know, but if you guys know something, let me know in the comments below. And thank you Igor for sending these in. There will be a link to his eBay shop in the description below the video. Next I got one of these soldering iron tip cleaners. It's a dry clean brass sponge and I've been using these for the past 10 years. Uh, they're really great and I prefer them over the traditional wet sponge cleaning method because they don't shock the soldering iron tip so you always have a constant temperature at the tip. People might say this increases wear on the soldering iron tip but honestly I haven't had any issues with that because generally the wear is distributed among a bunch of different tips that I use at the same time so I never worn out a tip completely to make it unusable. This is uh, fairly inexpensive and comes in this uh, convenient to use metal holder. This will collect all the little solder bits and debris so it's a pretty clean solution as well for the bench. I highly recommend you get yourself one of these and give it a try. I think you'll love it. Next up I have a small electromagnet. This is 12 volts rated 2 watts with 2.5 kg suction force but you can find these in a variety of sizes and power ratings. I did not have any specific requirements for this, I just ordered one because of this thing I have from early childhood when I started having physics classes in school and they started teaching us about electromagnetism. I was really interested in learning more and I was experimenting and building electromagnets at home. Of course they were not very efficient but it kind of brings back memories so when I saw this on Aliexpress I had to order one. But if you happen to have a project in mind for this, it's good to know that you can find them. They are ready-made and really inexpensive. Next up, I have a PAR triggered battery powered lamp. This uses four AAA batteries, which is kind of inconvenient, but also features 10 white LEDs in total. So it, they probably need the higher voltage to drive all of this, those LEDs. Like I mentioned, it's uh, motion triggered via this PIR sensor and it will stay on for about 25 seconds and it also has a light sensor so it will only turn on if the ambient light is below a certain threshold. The light it produces is pretty decent, it's more than enough for lighting a dark closet for example or even a dark hallway at night time. I've checked the current consumption of this and it's about 280 milliamps at 6 volts so you will only get about 2.5 hours of usage out of a good set of alkaline batteries. There is no on off switch on this thing so once it's loaded with batteries and the light is low enough it will always trigger on motion. Next I ordered a set of these really small clips for attaching to fine pitch IC legs. These could be really useful for reading or writing various signals from a board without having to solder wires. I haven't tried this, uh, these before, so in theory it sounds nice, but let's see how they uh, behave in practice. I have prepared a board here for testing. This has a couple of SO packages. So you're supposed to first connect a DuPont wire to one of these small clips. And after inserting the DuPont wire, we should be able to spring push these to pull out the mini hooks. I find it that they are too small to be, uh, be operated one handed. It's really difficult. They slip out of your fingers. So you'll probably need to use two hands to operate these with one hand to hold the uh, actual hook and with other one to push the spring.
as you saw the hooks work fine with the standard SO package but when you go down to a 0.5 millimeter pin pitch they will short neighboring pins so I don't really think that you can use them for um, connecting to uh, 0.5 millimeter pitch or smaller however they're they are kind of inexpensive so uh, it's worth having a set of these in your toolbox I'm pretty sure these will be useful at some point uh, in the lab next I have a Bluetooth USB dongle because ever since I switched to a desktop computer as my main machine I have been lacking Bluetooth connectivity this one comes old style with a uh, small DVD uh, which probably contains the drivers I mainly need uh, Bluetooth connectivity for interfacing to various USB meters or dummy loads I get from AliExpress. So I decided to order one of these uh, compact ones which I can hide behind the desktop computer. I got one which is uh, marked as Bluetooth 5, but I don't know how to check if this is really uh, a Bluetooth 5 chipset. I have connected this to my uh, Windows 10 machine and it automatically installed. I'll put the VID and PID codes on screen right now so you can take a look. Uh, I did a quick Google search and Realtek seems to pop up in the search results but with no particular model. So if you happen to know how to identify if this is really a Bluetooth 5.0 chipset or not, please let me know in the comments below. It's not really important that I get the 5.0 version, I don't really need it, but it would be nice to know if this is what they claim it to be. I've also checked the website they uh, quote on the uh, front of the package and this is what comes up it's some kind of declaration for the Bluetooth standard and there is a mention of uh, version 5.0 here but I don't know if it really means anything or not. Next up I have a micro HDMI to normal HDMI cable. I got this specially for the Raspberry Pi 4 which is now featuring two micro HDMI video outputs. This is one meter length so it should be good for connecting on short distances. I also got a nice 10 inch monitor which I will be showing in a future video. It's 2K resolution and the Raspberry Pi desktop looks really nice and crisp on that monitor but more on that in a future video. You can either get one of these wires which is the recommended option or you can get a small adapter from micro HDMI to normal HDMI and then you can use a normal HDMI sized cable but in general you want the least amount of adapters and connectors in a high speed signal pad so it's better to go with the correctly terminated cable from one end to the other. These are fairly inexpensive so if you own a Raspberry Pi 4 or plan to get one I would recommend also getting a couple of these. And the last item in our video is this plain old card relay and you might wonder yourself why does this guy bought a car relay from AliExpress and why is it showing it to us? Well things are not always what they seem and the same can be said about this relay even though it looks like a plain old car relay it's something better than that. Let me show you what I mean. Now I bet you haven't seen a car relay with this much circuitry inside it. This is actually a tracker and remote kill switch for your car. Inside this relay they packed a GSM modem so you will need to put in a SIM card for communication. They've also integrated a GPS module, this is the antenna for the GPS, so you can get position data and a backup battery of 110 mAh and a switch which you can use to cut off power to the fuel pump remotely. So this is a pretty awesome relay, a nice disguise for a tracking device. If you connect this in a way that looks like factory wiring, a potential thief will never think you have something like this in your car. So if something bad happens, like someone steals your car, you will be able to track it and uh, activate the remote kill switch. But as with all Chinese made tracking devices, there is always the issue of privacy because uh, this will most certainly send back data to a home based server which is often located in China. We don't know how they will use that, that data or how well the data is secured. So keep this in mind if you install something like this on your car, there is a risk of your private data being handled um, improperly. That was all for today, I would really appreciate your support on Patreon or even just hitting the like button on this page. Also let me know your thoughts in the comments below, did you find something interesting to order this mailbag or not? 
Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week with a new video.